Game over is called by this horse. I could not withstand a kick that he could dish out. This is my first time ever meeting this paint mare, Philly. And here I am showing you the last part of my two hour session to show the improvement first because when I put the very first video of what it looked like, uh, my viewers uh, are all up in arms. The ones that don't know what they're looking at think I'm mean. So this is at the end of the session. I tapped her with the rubber bat um, because she didn't move, but you can see she's yielding and turning to the right. So I turn horses to the right to establish leadership. It's huge, a uh, huge difference that you get in the horse's walnut, his brain is not much larger than a walnut, when you can make them yield to your space. You see I'm rubbing her here when she yields. The bat simulates a bite. Horses bite each other after they pin their ears. If the uh, non-dominant horse does not yield, they bite. Okay, I can't pin my ears, but I can simulate a bite to right behind her pole area if she does not yield. Uh, then what I'm doing here is having her keep a distance because as soon as I entered the pen she rushed up to me in my face and I don't like a horse that rushes into my space, starts mouthing on me, um, especially when I was told that she bit <clears throat> and that she had kicked the farrier and it wasn't his first visit. They uh, tried to do her under sedation and she still kicked him. So that's what I'm armed with. Now this is your scene, the follow up at the end of the session. We didn't tape the first part because I just go out there and sometimes it's awkward to say, hey, can you tape how bad your horse is, you know? So after we went on a while, I, I asked the owner to tape. Uh, me, but when I initially tried this, and this is what I first did when I came in to meet her, was keep her distance. She was running way to the right, running to the left, uh, trying to run over the top of me. It was pretty ugly. Um, but again, after two hours, this is what I have, which I'm really happy with. Um, she balks on that halter rope because uh, she's really not halter broke. Uh, the owner did demonstrate to me that she could lead the horse but she said as soon as the horse was done, she was done and she would bolt. Um, her idea and most people's idea of leading and mine is completely different because I don't hold them up tight and micromanage their head. And I, want, and, uh, I don't want my feet anywhere close to their feet. I want to be able to lead them shoulder to shoulder on a loose line. Uh, the difference between what I do and most people do is like if you see somebody uh, leading a dog, okay, well the dog's really leading them, uh, an unruly animal, and pulling hard on the halter rope, I'm sorry, on, on his, um, pulling hard on his collar, and you know, are they going for a walk? Yes. Um, is the dog light in the owner's hand and healing on a light line? No. Um, so it can look pretty as long as the owner does not make any corrections to the dog and just lets that continue. I can't do that. And I want the horse or the dog on a light line being super responsive. Horses can step on your feet. Um, right here she's backing up. She shook her head in response to that whip. This is my first session with her. I did not beat her with the whip. I tap till she come forward. I'm rubbing her chest here. Um, that's a pain response that they're anticipating pain when they shake their head like they do when they're getting an injection from the vet, um, when they're getting shots. I can tell that they're anticipating pain. Yes, I will use the whip. I'm rubbing it here because I don't want to get up and close and personal with this horse until I know her reaction to when I tap her to go forward. Um, so. Uh, here you're going to cut to, this is about done right here, and we're going to cut to when I first arrived and how ugly it looked when I asked her to turn to the right. But remember um, how good it looked in my first session when you very first started viewing this video, her crossing over in front and um, yielding to my authority 
and moving out of my space away from me. So here we go. This is, and she's pushing through pressure here again. Remember, she's not really halter broke. She doesn't know to give. So here is my uh, first moments of trying to um, teach her to turn to the right, or maybe not. Hold on. Okay, I asked her to back up by holding on the rope. She does. I release the pressure. And I go to pet her. I like to reward the slightest try with the release of pressure. One, two, sucks to be you. If you don't move, I'm going to give you a shank throwing that uh, lead rope out. Okay, so yes, here I am going to do the turn to the right. So I have the butt end of the rubber whip. And it's a, a lot easier if you use a short bat instead of this long whip that I'm using right now. So she's not yielding. I'm looking, waiting for her right front to step away or anything that looks like she's yep. yielding, not backing up, because backing up is just a, an evasion. So whenever she does a nice, you know, even a little yield, I will rub her and reward her and let her know, yes, that's correct. And if she doesn't yield, I'll just keep mm -hmm. coming. I uh, simulated a bite to her neck and now a bite to her hindquarters, which just puts me back in charge. Um, so I'm just simulating a horse biting because she goes, oh, I get that horse language. You know, you see her ears um, going back and forth a little bit. She's She is super agitated. See that tail swishing? Yeah. Because she's like, never in my three years on this planet has anyone ever, ever asked me to turn to the right. You know, I'm rubbing her in between and she's got to soak all this in. She's backing up to get me out of position. Uh, I stepped on her there because she went to step on my feet. Horses should never step on a human. They should never barge into a human. So this is the following week and because I couldn't even address handling her feet the first time because I didn't want to get kicked. One blow from that leg can put me out of commission. And uh, But I just want to show a follow-up from my first two-hour lesson, which you just viewed portions of it. Um, we didn't tape it all, but nothing was edited out. We just taped short clips and put um, them together. Um, that I have her out here on a loose line, and she's in agreement to what I'm doing. I'm not having, you know, she might not be having a blast, but she's not moving, um, barging forward, running backward. She's pretty much trusting me with just the little handling that I did with her the week before and the handling that I did with her this day, which I went over everything, everything got a lot easier. Um, but what I was saying before, um, and remember this was a horse that had to be tranked and still kicked and held tight to be trimmed. Um, and I went over her with my rasp, um, going through the motions and not just picking her feet. Um, but anyways, what I was saying before about a dog on a tight line, I could make myself and the horse look fine if I led like that, but I don't lead like that. I don't, I don't keep a tight tension on the lead rope. Um, I want the horse walking on his own feet and respecting, never coming into my space, never allowing the horse to move me. So um, she did really good for the end of this session, but I did not see this mare um, again after that. Uh, life got in the way for the owner, and now I'm revisiting her, um, and I have a lot of work to do.